Welcome back to Bayonos RC World. It's been a while, you guys. All right, so we are at that stage, all right? If you've been following the uh, channel, you've been following the build series of the Top Flight P40E Warhawk 60 size kit, you know that we are now ready. Glassing, primering, panel lines, rivets, details, paint, all that, all right? So from this video forward, we are going to be concentrating just on those items. So if you want to see how that is done, stick around, sit back, relax, enjoy the video, and let's get on with it. Vortex, all right, covering. And uh, this is my first time utilizing Oratex. And as you can see, we got the Oratex, um, you know, instruction sheet that comes with the roll of covering. All right. And so basically, it'll tell you everything you need to know in regards to um, preparing and, and getting this uh, covering iron on properly and all that good stuff all the way to the back. All right. So I'm um, going based off of this and we got no issues with that. I'm gonna go ahead and apply kind of similar to how I do monocoat, all right? And it being fabric, it's still, based on the information, it's still uh, pliable uh, with heat, all right? You can still stretch it uh, around the corner and all that other good stuff. And so um, we'll see, all right? And uh, I got these two pieces already at cut out all right and what this is going to be for is to go ahead and apply to the uh, bottom piece here and also to the uh, leading edge beveled area right here all right so I'm gonna cover this area as such first all right and then from there we can go ahead and cut a big piece and actually cover uh, both sides. All right. I went ahead and uh, I basically final sand this and make sure everything is all nice and smooth as much as possible. And then uh, I got a damp cloth here and uh, just basically wipe it all off. All right. Making sure that all the sanding dust and uh, if you got a compressor, uh, blow out the, uh, the wood structure. That way it can take out most of the um, fine sanding dust that is embedded into the wood, right? That will prevent the adhesive from sticking. With that said, I'm just we're just waiting for the uh, sealing iron to go ahead and heat up. And while we're doing that, I'm going to go ahead and kind of notch this piece right here. All right. Give it like that V taper. Um, that way we can fit it exactly in this area right here. All right. So what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to grab my blade and I'm just going to cut it to a V like such. All right. And then we can go ahead and start this off by covering this particular area right here smaller iron just to get this all locked in all right the cool thing about this Oratex is that it's uh, you don't need any um, dope um, to uh, apply this everything is all self sustained besides the heat that you provide so that is pretty awesome. And since I'm all the way here on the island of Guam, I really cannot get, uh, you know, like the SIG products uh, shipped to Guam because of the hazmat issue. Um, they won't ship it to Guam. So I had to look for another alternative. Um, and I found this Ortex. Never used it before, so this is the first time. You want to make sure that you're also putting some pressure 
that way you can get the adhesive to really hold down and and lock down onto the wood all right I mean, I, I can't complain. This is pretty straightforward, really. Kind of reminds me, like I said, uh, I don't know if I did say it here. It reminds me of uh, Sentry's um, Cover It, or Cover Right, however you want to call that. Uh, fabric covering back in the 80s. You know, they, it just, this one is a little thinner than uh, the Sentry cover, uh, fabric covering. And the weaves are very fine compared to Sentry. Sentry, the the weaves are just a little thicker. I mean, you can really see it that it's fabric. This one, from a distance, you can't really tell until you start getting closer. And then when you uh, actually start touching it, you can feel that it's uh has a fabric type of feeling. All right. So we got that right there. Very simple. All right, let me just go ahead and make sure everything is really locked down. And so now we're going to go ahead and uh, take care of this top one or the leading edge. All right, let me go ahead and face it towards me real quick. I want to make sure that uh, we're covering as much as we can. Um, one day I'll get myself a pocket thermometer type deal so I can really know what the heat is but ideally it says to go with uh, what is it uh, 100 and uh, medium range or low range adhesive side we begin to stick to the balsa at 90 degrees Celsius or 194 degrees Fahrenheit medium range is 130 30 degrees Celsius to 266 degrees uh, Fahrenheit and uh, medium range basically is midway between high and low range all right duh and then a uh, high range is 150 degrees Celsius or 302 degrees Fahrenheit um, yeah yeah I just do it the way I do it because uh, for one I'm just kind of used to it I can see what the material is doing and Right now it's holding down and it's not melting on me or burning, so we're good. Alright, so there you go, just like that. Alright, now I'll just go ahead and trim that off, cut this one off, and then we'll just apply, apply a bigger sheet on the bottom there. We'll just cut it right here, just like so. All right, and with this, there you go. Just being careful not to gouge the wood. All right, guys. So as you can see, it's pretty much what I got going on here. All right. And then we're gonna go ahead and uh, cut a bigger piece to be able to at least get up to the edge of this. All right, cool. All right, now Go ahead and place this there. Kind of get center of this. It's not very really crucial, but I just want to make sure I got enough on each side. As far as the material is concerned. Alright. Just like that. Get myself a baseline. That way I know it's right smack in the middle, just like that. Cool. I got my sealing iron and uh, start ironing. 
Always start from the center out. It's no different than any type of covering. All right. Main thing is to uh, eliminate any wrinkles, any bubbles. I mean, I believe you still could get some bubbles on this, so be very careful. So just like so. kind of go all the way towards the edge kind of iron some material down on the edge there as if I was gonna go all the way and that way I know I'm getting some material locked in on that part just like so That way, if you have any questions, you can see it right here. Now, this is not the be all done all type deal. This is just how I'm doing it. As a matter of fact, the thing I noticed with the, the, any fabric covering really, since it's thicker in nature compared to like Monaco or plastic covering, that um, all your edges would be very noticeable. So um, overlaps, crookedness, all that, well, basically you would see it. So um, try to get it as straight as you can. Fortunately, this is not all that straight, but like I said, this is just to uh, uh, kind of, this is all going to be underneath the other layer. So I'm not worried about it. Once we start cutting like the Monaco, I mean the Ortex up front here, I'll do a straight line. That way it looks semi-decent uh, however this is gonna be hinged and butted up so you're not really gonna see that unless it gets deflected but who's really paying attention to that unless you're uh, you know doing this in a scale competition type deal everything counts all right guys so just like so all right we got the uh, front leading edge and the bottom portion of the uh, balance tab area uh, basically covered like I said uh, the center piece right here I'm going to um, use 30 minute epoxy uh, and um, thin down with uh, alcohol and brush it in there basically first I'm going to paint it um, and then from there I'll go ahead and brush the uh, mixture on top of that I got um, a sheet of Ortex that I already had cut off camera. All right, and uh, as you can see, you got this uh, paper back in like so. And this side, the shiny side, is the one that actually goes towards the wood, and the dull side is your exterior surface. All right, and just blow all that. And we're just gonna place this right here. Try to get it right here. And kind of made it a little too big, but I do want to be able to have something to grab, all right? And uh, be able to pull and kind of stretch it around, all right? So. See what I'm doing here, just basically stretching it now. So going all the way around to the other side, kind of. Just like so. 
so. Be very careful not to uh, put any wrinkles into the uh, covering. top here. I kind of do it like this. While I'm also pulling this thing, I'm trying not to uh, break my wood structure too, so uh, be very mindful. And then from here, and uh, being the fact that this is an open bay right now, and there's nothing on the opposite side um, to cause the ballooning effect I'm gonna go ahead and seal this side how you see it just like so all right just like that in the material trying to get the wrinkles out I'm just kind of I'm kind of struggling just a little bit here because my extension my wire or my outlet I should say is kind of further behind me and so I'm running the full length of the cord right now and uh, so if I look kind of like I'm playing twister here that's the reason why all right so we got all that there all right let me go ahead and take your this bottom piece right here there we will go ahead and uh, cut the slit right here and uh, we will get this portion kind of pulled towards the center here and iron that down as well and then everything else around the perimeter we will go ahead and trim off all right that's going on I'm just gonna go ahead and start stretching and getting some of this around so I'm just gonna go ahead and do this just like that. Alright. I'm going to cut this in an angle. Oops.
just like that. Just don't cut your fingers. I'm telling you guys that, but I'm making sure I don't cut my fingers. All right, so eh, that'll work for me. And then from here, we can just kind of cut this piece right here, just like so. And we can cut this right here, just like so. can start getting all this to the leading edge all right so there you go guys you got the rudder all said and done all right so there you go guys this is pretty much the rudder just like so now all we can do here is uh we can shoot primer over this or go straight into the um since we're going to be utilizing uh rust -Noleum specialty camouflage paint system right uh that's the one that has the earth brown uh tan the khaki um and has the forest green and i believe it's uh leaf green or something like that so same thing that uh, I used to paint up my uh, flight test uh, C-47 and P-38. Alright, same paint rattle can so it's not bad uh it's gonna be the first uh balsa aircraft that i will paint up with a rat with rattle cans all right i'm normally an automotive paint type of guy and i normally use uh automotive clear coats and all that stuff i'm gonna check and double check uh our automotive paint supplier here on the island of guam and see if they have flat clear coat i know they have semi-gloss and uh so we'll, we'll we'll see if they have flat all right but other than that that's pretty much it i'm gonna go ahead and uh take care of covering the elevators and then the ailerons um off camera and then we'll get really right into the uh the nuts and bolts of the whole covering scheme of the um fuselage with three quarter ounce glass and uh zap z epoxy finishing resin all right, guys, so we got the rudder and we got the elevators, as you can see right there. All right. And so, yeah, looks good. All right, so get on with, I'm not going to do the aileron jet until we get to the wing, and then I'll go ahead and cover that main thing right now is to get started um, with fiberglassing the fuselage here <clears throat> so without further ado let's get on with the fiberglassing zero doesn't measure the cup so we're gonna go I think six grams, five grams is good. So another five grams of this, I'll bring it up to 10. Go. And then I'm uh, just gonna go ahead and cover this. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and mix this up. Mix it up all nice and thoroughly what we're doing 
here. All right. All right, first note is I got my fiberglass kind of going over and onto the fuse right here, as you can see. All right. That way we ensure that we have a nice seamless joint when we butt up the side of the fuse, the sheeting there. All right. So we're going to go ahead and apply. All right. We're just going to kind of wet this down, guys. There's no sense trying to be stingy here on this part. All right. Just got to hold down your uh, glass just so it doesn't move in the meantime. All right. Main thing here is just to wet the glass. And saturate this thing. All right. And what the resin's going to do, it's going to soak into the wood as well. All right. And I'm I'm kind of pushing down a little as well so I can ensure that this resin is basically getting into the weaves. All right. I'm going to apply a little bit more. Just so we can make sure we get all the way to the edges. All right. And you want to go past your, uh, on your edge, your trailing edge, you want to go a little bit past and also on your leading edge. All right. corners all right as you can see here all the glass here so far is saturated with the resin except for this part right here all right so on this piece right here we're gonna go ahead and uh, get a little bit more resin over here and then we're gonna go ahead and apply it right about there all right just like so and then bring it all the way to the front to the leading edge as well I'm trying to get in all this nice and saturated there and we'll just start pushing some of this resin to the corner right about here and then we'll just get it out remove it off just like that all right all right, so now that we got the glass all saturated, you can see that there's nothing white, all right? There's no white um, pieces of fiberglass exposed here. That means uh, your glass is basically nice and saturated. I'm going to keep repeating myself with that. Saturated except for this front piece right here. All right. Now how far I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go and I'm gonna get the glass right here. A little bit, of, about a half of the um, leading edge. It's probably gonna be a little bit more, but it's okay. You could trim it off all right and ensure that on the back side here that you go past the edge with your resin all right you want to build up a little a little bit of resin at the end here and that way when you use your blade and cut it off I have a nice nice clean edge all right all right so there you go. And I normally have a rag here. The rag is just so I can wipe and clean off my my spreader, all right? And now we're going to add a little bit of pressure and remove as much of this resin as we can. All right. It should kind of look dry. 
when it's all said and done. All right, guys. And you can see that there's going to be hardly any resin left on there. It's just going to look like just the fiberglass. That's it. So you can see what I'm doing here now, all right? This is why I'm like, you don't really need um, to thin this down. Now, this is all saturated enough. I mean, at the same time, I didn't weaken the, uh, the strength of this uh, resin. It's full strength. And you don't see a buildup of resin all over this uh, structure right now. All right. That's it. Just like that. And as you can see, let me go ahead and bring you closer here. Make sure I don't got resin on my glove and touch on my phone. All right, as you can see here, I got a buildup of resin at the edge. All right, that's gonna really strengthen the edge portion of this glass and also allow a nice clean cut when you use the razor blade. Alright, so let's say you cleaned off all that resin from the edge and you just got, or you didn't really touch the edge, right? You still got just regular fiberglass. When you cut it, your glass will end up pulling and stringing out and you'll end up having a lot of frays all over the place instead of a nice clean look. Alright, so if you look at that, it's not thick, guys. You can still see the weave, alright? It's not thick. You don't see an excess amount of resin there. All right. And so when this thing starts tacking up and uh, it starts to become a little tacky, then that's a sign to come back with the second coat, which is the skim coat and technically your last coat. You're just going to use that skim coat. And you're just going to press all that resin into the current weave that you see now and it's gonna fill all that in and then you remove as much as you can off as well and you're just gonna have like a little shiny you know sheen to this whole um, uh, structure and then you can come back when everything is said and done all nice and dried and cured and sand it smooth all right and you still have a decent you know um, amount of resin on there uh, enough to provide a smooth surface for the next step, which is primering. And you're not gonna have to do a lot of filling uh, and all that other stuff. It's just light coat of primer, sand it with uh, your 400, 600 grit sandpaper, and then paint. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Said and done. All right, guys, so we got the um, second coat, the skim coat. All right. So it's tacky, all right? And that's what we want. We don't want it where it's completely dry, all right? 
so it's good enough to go ahead and put a skim coat all right and with this one here I'm just going to apply the resin all over while applying pressure all right take this off and I'll put it on the other side. Okay. So what I'm doing now is just pressing the resin into the weave. Alright. And I'm just transferring all the excess to the other side. doing here is just really pushing all that resin in and then wiping off the excess smooth it out that's it all right so from here we're gonna go ahead and uh, take care of the other side all right so this is all the excess that was from the other side there and I'm what I'm doing is just gonna repeat I'm just gonna pretty much spread all this resin onto the weave all right Just like that. And then we're just gonna apply pressure to fill all those weaves. Alright, just like that. And I'm gonna just take off the excess here. And once you start getting the hang of this, you you know how much resin you need to really mix. This one was only for, uh, I did five grams. Um, it's still too much, but you know what? I don't care. like that and just remove all the excess and this is just giving that top layer skim coat filling in the weave as much as we can and then the primer eventually will do most of that work as well so we got three ways to go ahead and fill the weaves so we got applying the skim coat First coat, saturation coat, second coat, the skim coat, and then the primer. Alright, so that's pretty much it, guys. That's it in a nutshell. And uh, try to get as much as you can and make it even. That's your main thing too, is just getting the 
getting the resin here even all the way around so you don't have these globs of resin all right because you, the more globs of resin you have on your your surface that's just more sanding that you got to do and uh right now we're trying to uh well, well at this point right now you got full control of um preparing yourself for success right so you don't want to do a lot of uh unnecessary sanding that you don't have to all right so with this let me go ahead and bring you in closer and you'll see with this right here it's going to be very minimal sanding guys all right as you can see there's no excess resin all caked up on there all right you still can see the weaves all right Primer will go ahead and fill all that, and then uh, when you start sanding it smooth, it's gonna be really, really nice. All right. So, with that said, we're gonna go ahead and uh, start preparing for the glassing of this bottom piece here. Being very careful with the uh, tail gear because we don't want to epoxy or put resin all up in this area and then end up sealing and locking that in there all right so uh what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut an opening on the glass all right away from the torque rod or the the gear and then um uh i'm going to put a little bit of uh a vaseline around that edge so if should i have any um resin seep through that area it won't lock it in place all right but yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and knock this out, this bottom piece right here up to the end. All right, and once we're done with that, we're gonna do the side all the way from front to back, all the way back, just like that, and then the top. All right, let's do it. All right, guys, for this one, I'm gonna do my very best to uh, see if I can really get this here. Uh, this one's gonna be a little tricky. little tricky but should be okay main thing is just to saturate the glass prevent it from moving a lot. It's the main thing really. I'm just gonna bring it down over here. And kind of pull the glass a tad bit. Again, going past the edges. Ryan. All right. Trying to 
doesn't work before the uh, resin starts kicking in big time. Whoa, whoa, too muchy, too much. Well, that's all right. Uh, let's go push it all the way up there. Let's get that off. Get this off here. Not to uh, just get a little bit past the cloth there. back here I'm not too worried about it going on the wood right now on, on parts that don't got glass I'm not worried about that Here we just start making sure that we don't have any uh, white spots. All right, that means uh, the glass is not fully saturated, and we don't want that. All right, so we'll make sure that everything has resin and that the glass is really seated down on the wood. This is the bottom of the plane, so I'm not too worried that much about it. It's just about this part right here, you know, that this the glass tends to follow you. And so on this part right here, I'm not really able to uh, put too much pressure. Otherwise, I start pulling the glass with me. If you see what I'm talking about right here. good I could deal with that yep I could deal with that that works for me let's go remove let's go remove some of this right here
just one of those things. Still try to get as much off as I can, but see how, see how I'm pulling it now, and it's pulling my glass with me. So gotta try to eliminate that. Yeah, this one was just a little, a little more difficult, a little more trying, only because I tried to do this all at one time, uh, it just still works, you know, still works. Let's go see how dry this one is. I, I'm not putting a second coat on this one, a skim coat because of the rate everything is. Uh, we're just gonna go with this one. Yeah, it's not dried yet because I could feel the, the resin is gummy. That's best when it's uh, completely dry or cut cleaner. part that's okay all right get my spreader and then we're just gonna go ahead and uh the glass, I mean the uh, resin. thing is with this I don't like going downwards like that because you see how it 
that's pulling the strands. But, you know, it is what it is. is what it is all that eventually will get um, blended in works for me. guys so we got those parts basically all glassed as you can see take this off so we got the bottom of the rear aft we got the bottom uh, piece here with the fairing and also the bottom of the um, horizontal stabilizer uh, we got all that basically glass so now we're gonna turn it around and we will now start concentrating on glassing the uh, top portion of the horizontal stabilizer. All right, so we'll go ahead and put this just like so. And then we'll start right up here. All right, so as you can see, we got everything all cleaned up all right and just off camera what I did after um, we trimmed all this I just came back here with a um, t-bar sander and uh, I think this is a hundred grit sandpaper and uh, fairly worn out hundred grit sandpaper it wasn't a fresh um, a piece of paper though so I just basically uh, came in and roughly uh, cleaned up all those edges after the cut line, all right? And by doing that, it gave me a nice transition, right? Without without sanding any of the balsa, all right? It's just the um, resin and glass, just blending it in. And I did that all the way around, all right? And also to the other side. And I did that with the uh, bottom section here with all that glass that was sticking out from the bottom. I went ahead and also went after we trimmed that, went ahead and sand all that smooth. So um, the next layer of glass, when it comes down, uh, we can have a nice seam, uh, seamless joint. Holding down the glass so it doesn't move just in the meantime.
once again just saturate in the glass take off these excess this one I'll go a little bit past halfway on the uh, overlap I'm just kind of bringing it down and under That way I know it has a good overlap. Alright. Let's go put just a little bit more here. Kind of push this resin to the uh, corner. get off as much as we can press down a little bit and bring some of that resin to the corners that way we can have a nice cut at the seam clean take some of this off here So, as you can see, my glass on this side is also all saturated. The wood is also discolored. That means the resin has penetrated the wood. All right. Now, if you use a regular a brush, um, you're gonna have a hard time trying to remove a lot of the resin. All right. If you're using a brush and 
the outcome of using a brush most of the time is um, you end up like this. I don't know if you can see it. Let me just go see if I can bring you in closer on this one. If you're leaving your resin on that thick, like that, right from the beginning, and you're done, and you move on and let that dry, for one, you're gonna have a lot of work to do to sand all that down. And then two, you're adding too much resin, uh, leaving too much resin, where uh, you're just adding more weight, unnecessary weight. All right, so I'm just trying to uh, eliminate a lot of sanding so just trying to thin out the resin here at the edge and that's it just like that just making sure that my glass is also pushed down on the corners and then from here Continue removing as much resin as we can without distorting the glass, all right? Just making sure that my glass is also pushed down the corners and then from here continue removing as much resin as we can without distorting the glass all right Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Right. Can't get any easier than that. Or it can, depending on you. Alright. That's it. So we're just gonna go ahead and let this cure and then we'll come back and then we'll trim all, all the uh, glass off and um, yeah and then we'll start with the uh, vertical fin all right all right guys so we're gonna go ahead and take care of the horizontal fan awesome stuff we get in there you know I was just waiting for all this uh, resin the cure is the one that takes the time resin in here so I'm gonna have a lot of excess so I'm not really gonna need that much on this all right guys how we doing how we doing all right so if you made it this far into the video I surely appreciate you. All right. Uh, unfortunately, from here on out, the instruction is pretty much the same throughout the video. All right. It's you know mixing up your your resin, 50/50, uh, applying it full strength, holding the uh, fiberglass down while you spread and saturate the glass is pretty much the same throughout. I do not deviate. I do not change it up. The only thing that's going to change during this time is the structure that you are glassing. All right, if it's compound curved, if it's flat, a leading edge, you know, turtle deck, whatnot. That's going to be the only thing that's going to change throughout your glassing procedure here. Or the size of glass. So uh, the next uh, procedure we're going to be doing here will be the main fuselage. I'm going to cover that main fuselage with one big piece of fiberglass cloth all right so we're so you know it's gonna be it's gonna be one big piece all right so you got to ensure that you mix 
enough resin to accommodate the size or the area that you're trying to cover. All right, that's the reason why I tend to have a lot of waste is because I don't want to go back and have to remix uh, some resin in the middle of a job. All right, so for me, if I have excess, a lot of excess that I have to throw away, then so be it. But I don't want to be or, or have to uh, start mixing a new batch right in the middle of an actual glassing job. All right, so um, once uh, you figure out the area that you're going to be covering, you can kind of estimate on how much resin and a hardener you're going to need for that particular area. And it's going to take just practice, experience, and uh, just just being mindful of what um, what you're doing. All right, so this is the reason why it's good to have um, a, a scale. That way you can measure out your your quantity, your, your measurements for your resin and hardener and keep tabs of that. That way you know next time you only need, you know, six ounces you know, or six grams or whatnot, you know. So uh, just think about things like that. It's not hard. It's really easy. It's very, uh, it's so repetitious, you know, um, in, in regards to glass and especially if you're doing a certain, you know, procedure. Like this procedure, this whole video is what I'm talking about. I don't know about what everybody else is doing out there. I mean, I do, but uh, we're not concentrating on that. We're concentrating on what I'm doing here in this video. All right. And so um, I just don't want to keep the video going on like this. Uh, just keep repeating myself. Uh, <laughs> people get tired. All right. We pretty much understand by now. I mean, one whole hour and 19 minutes in. I think if you've been with me uh, throughout this whole time, you already got the idea. All right. Now it's just a matter of just wanting to see uh, that particular area getting glassed. That's the only thing. Uh, but other than that, from here, we're just going to go into time lapse and um, just try to get through this last portion as quick as possible now if you guys have any questions in regards to whatever you've seen here or have not seen go ahead and just leave it in the comments and uh i do answer all my comments i, I look through them daily so if you have anything just let me know um hit me up on the um, facebook groups as well and i'd be glad to uh, assist you or give you some ideas or pointers or help i mean there's other people out there that know more than i do this is just my journey what i love doing almost 41 years now of doing this so having fun and just yeah it's keeping it real all right
garage basically covered. Man, I was I was rushing on that one. I felt the uh, I felt the resin starting to get hard. But um, it is what it is. But it's still it's not thick. You can still see the weaves. All right. There's some uh, areas here, like right there. A little puddling, but it's all right. No big deal. That's just all gonna get sanded anyways. But for the most part, you can still see the weaves right there. So it's not thick at all. All right, this is the wet, wet look right now, technically. <laughs> but yeah, so we got the uh, we got the right hand side of the fuse basically glassed, and it's dissected in the middle, so uh, it stops right about here. You can see the glass stopping right there. Stop right there. So it's basically dissected straight down the middle.
Bam! All right, guys. So we utilize three quarter ounce glass, fiberglass, glass, and we also use a Zap Z epoxy finishing resin, 50/50. We did not use it, uh, thin it out with uh, denatured alcohol uh, or anything. All right, we used it full strength. Still produced a real thin finish. All right, um, only weighing so far everything that we've done today or in this video thus far to include the ortex uh, covering for the tail surfaces everything we only added 0 0.3 pounds and that's not even sanded all right so we didn't remove any anything yet all right 0 0.3 pounds that's not a lot of weight guys and right, if you do it right do it properly you take your time you know it would yield an, a light, strong structure. All right. So with that said, we're gonna go ahead and uh, put this to the side. We're gonna the next video. We're gonna grab the wing and we're gonna start glassing that. All right. So uh, in the meantime, um, yeah, that's pretty much about it for this video. And I will see you guys on part six of the uh, Top Flight P40E Warhawk build. All right, guys. Oh, also, check this out. I got this shirt from Frank Washburn over at Frank's Model Aviation Workshop. All right, this is his new uh, shirt design that he uh, created. All right, uh, this is um, a ultimate biplane in the background. All right, so, hey, stop by his channel, check it out, see what he does. Go check him out, you know, and, and show him some love as well, you know, and... Uh, yeah, uh, other than that, I will see you guys on the next video. Shishoo!